Bricks of Babylon. This is the fabled palace of Nebuchadnezzar, rebuilt 2600 years after its first incarnation by Saddam Hussein. Nebuchadnezzar was the founder of the Mesopotamian civilization, Hussein the current king. Just up the hill from the Babylonian kings, one of Saddam's newer palaces, an archaeological affirmation of the modern-day Babylonian Empire. Saddam's eldest son Udo, too. The glory days aren't just the stuff of history but He's one of the most powerful and feared men in Iraq, well known for his chamber of torture at the Iraqi Olympic Committee. A desperate attempt on his life in 1996 left Udo temporarily paralysed he recovered to continue his control over a network of Iraqi media. The most influential, the Delhi newspaper Al-Babil. Al-Babil hasn't always pleased the government. In November 2002, the paper carried a translation of a London Times article that reported on Saddam's purchase of a Libyan bolt hole for his inner circle. A week previously, the paper had published a list of several hundred Iraqi officials with an opposition website that identified as Target under the headline Heroes List. It allegedly infuriated a number of those named. Saddam hit his elders with exile, now Uday is back in favour with his own television station. God is with us. God lets those which are in the right triumph. What the inspectors say is insignificant. They have no right to behave like that, like Zionists. Their way of thinking is the same. First they discover this, then that. The inspectors won't find anything. Like my father says, we're not lying. In this case, we are speaking the truth. The father in his son's propaganda show, singing and dancing for the beloved leader in his hometown, Tikrit. Come to us, you beautiful man. We give our blood for you. We sacrifice ourselves for you. You are our leader, and yet so modest. You are in our hearts. Saddam's family roots are the basis of his power. Men of his clan from the Al Bunazas then, Sunni Muslims. Saddam Hussein the sportsman. Here in the floodwaters of the Tigris and Salahuddin near Tikrit, Saddam confirms his place as the idol of the nation's enthusiastic swimmers. The double of Saddam has trained you, and you can only manage one river crossing. We'll have to train him some more. Last time when we crossed the river, the Americans said, that's that double again. He couldn't manage it three times. Only I can manage that. More choreographed anti-war demonstrations, complete with anti-USA slogans. Saddam's Iraq in the crosshairs of the foreign media. Al Jazeera, the current affairs revolution of the Arab world. For five years now, it's had an office in Baghdad. 22 employees, all Iraqi, mouthpieces of Saddam and his critics. We are standing at the very spot where we filmed from while heavy artillery rained down for five or six days in 1998. From here you get an excellent vista of Baghdad and can see clearly where the bombs are falling. These are the ruins from 1998. Our colleagues from CBS were also on the roof with us and we made a safe house. This is the remainder of it. We don't think if there's going to be a war it will be much use. Waiting for the war. For the 40 or so journalists still left here, it's a little like reporting in the old Soviet bloc. Every journalist is assigned a minder. But, like in the Eastern bloc, total control isn't guaranteed. Journalists use organisational chaos overtax supervisors and informers to get the story. Hey, 
My minder is Mr. Allah, clearly a big fan of animals. Two months ago, he was working as a tour guide. The history of the old Assyrian freezes is much more in his mind than thoughts of a possible future without Saddam Hussein. For the services of a man like Allah, journalists pay the Ministry of Information $100 a day. Of this, Mr. Allah sees precisely nothing, and he too expects a little extra income. After four weeks, we're a pretty good team. He watches me, I him, and both of us keep a beady eye on the state security team, Mukhabarat. They are a large boss and they make him uneasy too. The pressure is on to show only what is meant to be seen. A trip to Iraq's antiquity, permission granted. A trip to the hospice to see the innocent victims of sanctions. Filming, no problem. Opponents to the war, and preferably American ones, are welcome in Baghdad. The journalist request doesn't fit the mould of fans, so inquiries to interview alleged recently released political prisoners are allowed. The message of the media here, Saddam is Iraq and Iraq is Saddam. As long as that's true, there's no such thing as a free press in Saddam's Iraq. 